Feeling better? A little. Doug, did I do the right thing? Do you think so? Yes. Then you did. So stop thinking about it, Kate. That's ancient history now. How about a celebration date after the contest? I don't think so. Why not? Listen, I guess I was showing off, but I told Alice Dennison I was going on a date with you, and she flipped. So? First of all, she's making my life miserable. She jammed my locker so I couldn't open it, and I missed gym class. She's got her friends hassling me. But that's not really it. I don't want to go steady or anything. And I don't like the idea of going out with someone else's boyfriend. Well, I told Alice to get lost. Also, it's... You, t you told her to get lost? Yeah, today. You dumped Alice Dennison for me? No, for me. All right. Uh, excuse me for interrupting, but uh, is this the Lawrence house? Do I live here? Yep. Then this must be the Lawrence house. Oh, good. And are you a Lawrence? Yeah. Vic Mitchell, how do you do? Buddy Lawrence. Buddy, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Is this some kind of a survey or something? A sort of. Shoot. I'm talking with Buddy Lawrence. How old are you, Buddy? Fourteen. Fourteen-year-old daughter of Mrs. Catherine Lawrence, the holdout juror on the Rudy Cortez rape murder case. Buddy, can you tell us why your mother was so adamant in her position in court today? I don't know what you mean. Well, it was your mother, Buddy, who hung the jury. Her vote of not guilty set the accused rapist murderer Rudy Cortez free. You're kidding. I don't know anything. Buddy? I don't know. Wait in the car. Mr. Lawrence. Yes? I'm Dick Mitchell. TJ, with... where's Buddy? She, she went in the house. Did this man talk to her? Yes, sir. We were just standing here talking, and Mr. Mitchell said he wanted to ask her a few questions. We didn't know he was from a TV station. I guess I better get going. Will you tell Buddy I said goodbye? I will. Thank you. What is it you want? I just want to ask Mrs. Lawrence a few questions about the Cortez case. She doesn't want to talk about it. She doesn't want you bothering our children. Neither do I. Mr. Lawrence, I'm just doing my job. I know. I wish you'd do it somewhere else. I'm asking you to leave. Now. All right. I ask you to leave civilly. I won't ask you again. OK. OK. Today is a front page story. Tomorrow they wrap fish in it. Buddy? I think she's upstairs. Oh, let it ring. I don't want to talk to anybody right now. I think Buddy got it in the kitchen. What is it? What? Buddy, don't. It won't happen again. Yes, it will. It's going to keep happening, and it's all your fault. Buddy, calm down. Who was that? People who make those kind of phone calls don't tell their names. What do they say to you? I don't think you want to hear me say those words. The next time that guy phones, 
I hope you answer it. You're the one that started all this. Why should the rest of us have to listen to stuff like that? It'll be all right. She's had a rough day. First the reporter, now the phone call. In a few days, everything will be back to normal around here. No, it won't. Not ever. I don't think I could stand it. Come on, eat it, will you please? It's terrific. I suppose you made it yourself. No. You're in luck. Dad brought it home. Oh, I guess this is redundant. May I come in? The thing I can't figure out is how she stays so skinny with everyone bringing her food all the time. Just lucky, I guess. Louie, don't you have something to do downstairs? Oh, yes. I guess I was just trying to think up a good exit line. Nothing beats goodbye. That's not bad. Goodbye. Buddy, we can't go on this way. I know this is all very upsetting to you. I'm sorry. You changed your mind, huh? No, I didn't. If I had to do it all over again tomorrow, I'd do exactly the same thing. How do you think you'll like getting those phone calls every day? No, oh, buddy, that will stop. There are sick people in the world. And trials like this one bring out the worst in them. It's frightening. I hate it. But I'm not going to change my life or my behavior because of that. If you'd have stayed out of it in the first place. I don't have to explain my decision to go on the case to you, buddy. I know you're angry about it. But I'd like you to put those feelings aside now. The trial's over. I hope there won't be any more trouble. But if there is, we'll be able to get through it much better if we're together. It's not exactly that I'm angry. I, I mean, I am. But maybe if I told you something about myself, you'd understand better. Yes. I like keeping a low profile, you might call it. Around school and places. But it's not always easy in this family. With Willie, Nancy, and now you. It's making it very hard for me to blend in. When you're 14, it's hard to know what a blessing it can be not to blend in. And if you feel that way, why did you pick red satin? Huh? For your skateboard outfit. Oh. There are times when I want to stand out in a crowd. But I like to pick them myself. Are you going to finish it? I sure am. And it's going to be a winner. So am I. Alice Dennison, look out, you turkey. <laughs> Ooh, the peace pie. Thanks. Oh, Nancy, hi. I'm sorry to call so late. No, no, nothing's wrong. Uh, that's not quite true. Well, yeah, that's it. I should have known you'd see it in the papers. No, no, don't. As a matter of fact, that's the reason I'm calling. I'd feel better if uh, you and Timmy weren't around the house for a while. Can you stay up there for a few more days? Oh, yeah, I will. As soon as things settle down around here. Listen, Nancy, Kate doesn't know about this call. She's had a very rough time lately. I will tomorrow. Yeah, well, from the office. By all my love. Give Timmy a kiss for me. All right, bye. Good morning. This is Kate Lawrence. I'd like to order six thick center cut pork chops. And I'd like to order some oranges for juice, about five pounds, I think. A couple of heads of romaine. I don't understand. You've already made your daily run to this neighborhood? I didn't know you kept such a tight schedule. You're sorry. 
Well, so am I. How disappointing, Mr. Garvey. I thought better of you. That was Mr. Garvey at the market. There's something I think you ought to know about him, Elaine. His thumb and the scale are inseparable. <laughs> now I know how typhoid Mary felt. Is it that bad? I'm afraid the jury is still out on this one. Well, you didn't think you'd be voted the local favorite after all that, did you? No, I don't want to be. I just want to be left alone. Well, my dear Garbo got away with it. Maybe you can, too. <laughs> Tell that to my fans. <laughs> Coffee, please. I've already had two rotten phone calls this morning and one vile letter. Listen, Kate, I don't mean to pry, but what made you vote the way you did? Oh, I mean, can't we talk about something else? Anything else? What are you saving this week? My strength. Fred's brother, wife, and twins are descending for two weeks. Oh, I don't envy you. Kate, tell me about him. Him? Cortez. I'm sorry, but I'm just dying of curiosity. He must have made some kind of impression on you. He did. Then it wasn't only the evidence that decided you. It was him, too. On the contrary. He's really quite unpleasant, Elaine. A little frightening. Just containment, I guess. He never lost control of himself through the whole trial. Then I don't get it. Whether I liked him or not, Elaine, has nothing to do with it. The point is, in my opinion, the evidence didn't add up to enough to convict him. And his testimony was so blatant. He never tried to make out that he was anything but just what he is. In fact, he presented a very nasty picture of himself. I don't think he would have been that candid if he were guilty. How come when Garbo says, I want to be alone, everybody listens? <laughs> Hello? Uh, if I may interrupt, may I suggest that you try doing the same thing to yourself? Have a nice day. <laughs> Just who I was looking for. Close your eyes. Why? Just close your eyes. And you will give me a big surprise. Whoops. What's that? Open. Edward the Seventh, Rex Imperator. No, look at the other side. Territorial Efficiency Medal. Willie. It's a British Army decoration. I found it in a junk store, and I thought it fit the bill, considering what's been going on. Efficiency medal. Thank you, Willie. I love it, and I love you, too. I'm proud of you, Mom. You did good. I guess I made an impression, anyway. You always do. You can't help it. Well, I'm going to go over to Terry's. I'll be back later. Yes, I'd better start dinner. Willie? For this relief, much thanks. Hamlet? Act one, scene one. Hello, Mrs. Lawrence, please. Mom, somebody's here to see you. It looks like I'm not your only fan. Excuse me. to give you these flowers. It's not much, but I haven't been working much lately. Thank you. It's very thoughtful of you. Yeah, well, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be buying nothing for nobody anymore. Thank you, Mrs. Lawrence. It's not very good back there. 
young guy like me behind them bars? No, I'm sure it's not. It's a nice place you got here. Nice house. I like it. You got a big family? Our three children. That was my son. Oh, yeah? Tough looking dude. Well, I gotta get going now. Maybe I'll run into you again sometime. Thank you for the flowers. Doug, I'm so glad you're home. I was worried. You're late. Sorry. Uh, there was a big commotion at the courthouse. I wanted to get all the details. Have you heard anything? Anything about what? I guess you haven't. There's been another murder. They found the body about an hour ago, the same building. Oh, Doug, was she? Same as Maxine Vrialt. Police are looking for Cortez. They want to question him. He was here. What? Cortez, he was here. He came to see me this afternoon. I better call the police. Doug, what have I done? Everybody on the jury heard the same evidence that I did. They were so sure he was guilty. Why wasn't I? I'm beginning to think I let something interfere with my judgment. I was trying so hard to be fair. Maybe I was bending over backwards not to be prejudiced. I don't even know anymore. There's another girl dead. If I was wrong, that's happened because of me. Aren't you scared to be out here all alone? Don't you know that there's a murderer running around free? My dad won't let me go out by myself. Not any place. Yeah, nobody's safe. Except Buddy Lawrence. The guy wouldn't hurt her. Her mother saved his life. You better shut up about my mother. It's a free country. I'll handle this. Who's gonna make me shut up, shrimp? Not you, that's for sure. Maybe you could get your mother's friend Cortez after me. Go ahead, hit me, kill me. You've got nothing to worry about. Your mother will get you off. And don't think that TJ's gonna help you out either. He's through with you. He called me last night and told me so. He's taking me to the party after the contest. <laughs> I'm not going to be in the contest. Buddy, what is it? Do you really want to know? It's about you. I can't go anywhere without hearing about you and that murder you got off. I thought we settled all that. I thought so, too. But tell the rest of the world. It's going to go on forever. That's enough, buddy. When you want to talk to me rationally, I'll be here. That'll be never. And that's when I wear this thing, too. Come back here. Where are you going? Todd from Pfeiffer's. <laughs> Hey. 
Hey! How about answering me? I don't want to talk. All right, if you don't want to tell me what's wrong, then at least tell me where you're going. Audrey Pfeiffer's my last friend in the world, and brothers don't count. How about mothers? We're not talking. Well, that's nothing new. Come on, Peaches, let's go inside. I'm going... To Audrey Pfeiffer's. Right. Well, you're going the wrong way. I forgot my skateboard at the park. I'm going to get it first. Got to stop. I think we should get Buddy back here and talk it out. She is being a pill, but I can understand what she's going through. It's hard to be 14 in the center of attention, especially when it's all negative. I know that, but it's going too far. Call her at Audrey's. You're right, I will. Hurting you, running around here like a chicken with his head cut off? That's not gonna make things easier for her. Hello, Marcia, this is Kate. Oh, we're fine. No, we're not going tonight. Stan called and said the party was off. I didn't think it was. Yes, that's us, the Lucky Lawrences. No, of course I don't mind. I will miss the onion dip, but that's the breaks. I know. I appreciate it very much. Marcia, would you call Buddy to the phone, please? She isn't. Well, she said she was going over to see Audrey. I see. Well, will you have her call home when she gets there? Thanks. Marcia said she was coming over to see you, Audrey. She's going to stay for dinner, but she hasn't shown up. I never should have let her out of here. Now, hold it a minute, Kate. She could be anywhere. I don't like the idea of her being out alone. It'll be dark soon. Where on earth could she be? If you're talking about Buddy, I just saw her outside. She was on her way to the park. She left a skateboard there. And then she was going over to Audrey Pfeiffer's. Man, now, Kate, relax. As soon as she gets there, Marsha will have her call. At least we know she's all right. Hi, buddy. I've been waiting for you. Let go! I want to talk to you. Let go of me! D don't worry. I'm not going to hurt you. Who are you? I'm a friend of your mother's. I don't believe you. Her name is Kate Lawrence. Your father's name is Doug. Everyone knows that these days. Let go! I said I wasn't going to hurt you, buddy. What do you want? Let go! Leave me alone! D don't fight me! Hey, buddy, is that you? TJ! See you another time, kid. What's wrong? Who was that guy? I don't know. He just grabbed me. Are you, are you all right? Yeah, I guess. Let's just drop it, OK? Come on, I'll take you home. Listen, Alice gave me your message. As far as I'm concerned, it's OK with me. You don't have to be nice to me just because some creep grabbed me. What did Alice tell you? That you and she were back dating. And you believed her? Practically, no one would be seen dead in this town with me. So why not you too? Look, buddy, if I had something like that to tell you, I'd say it myself. I have very good manners. You understand? I'm sorry. It's OK. I just can't wait to see you beat the jumpsuit off of her tomorrow in the contest. That's not going to happen. I'm skipping the whole thing. You're crazy. I can't do it. Everybody looks at me funny these days. All they talk about is my mom and everything else. 
Buddy Lawrence, if you don't skate in that contest tomorrow, I'm dumping you. Morales Dennison. If that's what it takes to get you there, I'll sacrifice myself. Buddy, are you sure you're okay? I can't wait any longer. I'm gonna look for her. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go too. Oh, no, Willie, you stay here. I can't bear being alone. Buddy. I had no intention of coming home. The only reason I came home is because I promised T.J. I would. Buddy, you stop all this nonsense. Your mother's taken quite enough from you. Well, what about me? How am I supposed to feel? I mean, we get dirty phone calls. Just about every person in the world is talking about us. People I don't even know come up to me and grab me because they know I'm her daughter. Buddy! Someone grabs you? Some creep at the park. T.J. said I had to tell you. Well, what happened exactly? Did he say anything? Nothing much. He just scared me. And when T.J. came, he ran. He said he was a friend of Mom's. I'll go up. No, no. Not this time. I don't want to talk, especially to Mom. If you're going to tell me, I have to. You don't have to, not now, anyway. You do have to talk about the man in the park. It wasn't anything. Probably it wasn't. Come on, stop talking. OK. I was skating around. And this man came up and grabbed my arm. He knew my name. What did he look like? Just a normal person. He wasn't very tall. And he had a blue flannel shirt on like Willie's. He had red hair, and he kind of stuttered. I think you better tell that to the police. No. Buddy, I don't like the sound of it. You have to tell it to somebody who can check him out. One celebrity in this family is enough. Even Audrey Pfeiffer will drop me. You'll have to take that chance. Come on. Listen. When we're through, I'll take you to dinner. Just us? Just us. Will you ask the police not to tell anyone? Or let it get in the papers? It won't, I promise. OK. Get ready. We'll leave in a couple of minutes. OK. Did she tell you what happened? Yes. I think she should tell it to the police. Did she describe the man? She said he was wearing one of those Pendleton shirts. Oh, Doug, it was Cortez, wasn't it? You just don't want to say it. I know it was. Now, she also said he had red hair and a stutter. So the one thing we do know is that it was not Cortez. No, Doug, the one thing we know is that the man who accosted Buddy wasn't Cortez. Kate, stop it. I'm going to take Buddy down to the station and out to dinner. I want some time alone with her. Now, while we're gone, think things through clearly. You are not a woman who does things thoughtlessly. I'm just awfully confused right now. Doug, there was a red-haired man at court. He was a reporter from Bakersfield. Every time I turned around, he was there. He had a slight stutter. Did he tell you his name? Yes. Wilkes, Sam Wilkes. I'll tell the police. What are we doing here? Do I have to talk to some more people? No, you were terrific with the police. I'm sorry you had to come down here, but it may be important. Mom was wrong about Cortez, wasn't she? I don't know. That's not the point. Come on.
all the commotion started the day your mother walked into this room. Don't I know it. What do you know about juries? They're the basis of the American system of justice. They're supposed to guarantee that each person gets a fair trial before his peers, regardless of race, color, or financial position in the community. Sounds like you memorized it. I did. For civics. What do you think it all means? They decide who goes to jail and who doesn't. Exactly. No more than her fear of being wrong. You know what's tearing your mother apart right now? She's afraid what's happened is putting a distance between the two of you. That the love between you has been damaged. She hates that. I've been feeling the same way, too. I'm sorry. It's not your fault you're different. I guess I really don't mind it. I mean, I do, but I'm going to try not to. I mean, at least you're not boring. You're difficult, but most mothers are boring. Not being boring makes up for a lot to me. Thank you. That may be the nicest thing anybody ever said to me. I vote not guilty in the case of Kate Lawrence. Boy, it's not easy having the unpopular opinion. I'll save the world. Mom, do you think I could bleach my hair blonde? Could you? Yes. Will you? No. Why on earth would you want to? Well, if I'm going to stand out, I might as well go all the way. I figured if you did it, too, everyone would know we were unified. <laughs> Doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. It's what we do. On your mark. Get set. Go.
On your mark. Get set. Go. Lose, buddy. It's a tie, ladies and gentlemen. Buddy Lawrence and Alice Dennison have tied for first place in the girls' finals of the Conrad Hacker Giant Slalom Race. I don't understand why your father's not here. Yeah, I was wondering about that, too. Buddy, you and Alice listen carefully now. It's your last chance for the big $100 prize. Contestants will lose points for each code knocked down, and the first one across the finish line has the big prize. Get ready now. Here's where you get yours, Buddy Lawrence. Take your place, girls. Remember, first across the finish line wins the big okay. prize. Dad, I'm sorry I'm late. On your mark. Set. Go. Oh, you're a knockout, kiddo. That's all right. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Can I see his trophy? Congratulations. Really yeah. Can I see this in my room? Oh, great. We brought him back. That's fine. Pretty good, huh? This, $100, and T.J. Latimer. Pretty good. I'd say it was a day triumphant. Oh, we've got to find a terrific place to put this, huh? I think I'll sign up for the Southern California competition. We'll have to dream up some new costume. What color this time? I'd like to find out what color TJ likes best. <laughs> Sewing machines at the ready. Hey, suppose I become your personal manager. For a mere 10%, I could do... Forget it, Willie. I'm just trying. <laughs> How about here? Oh, looks good to me. Hello. Speaking. You what? I see. And he's in custody? Yeah. Uh, you're certain? Oh. Yeah, I see, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I certainly appreciate your calling to let us know. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'll tell her. I certainly will. Bye. Thanks again. Kate. What is it? They have arrested Sam Wilkes. Is that the man who grabbed me? That's right. Oh, my God. He, uh, he's not a reporter. He's been in trouble before. Now he's confessed. Maxine Briault. The other girl, too. They found a bracelet belonging to Maxine Briault in the apartment, a scarf belonging to the other girl. Then Cortez was innocent.
It's all over. You've been very brave, Kate. Mom? I told you you did good, Mom. Are you okay? No, but I'm on my way. Can I help? You just did. It's a mess, isn't it? A mess? You look beautiful. I do? I think I look dumb. Well, you're wrong. TJ here yet? Not yet. What time is it? 7.15. He's late. Oh, buddy, he said he'd be here at 7.30. That's right. He's late. He's not coming, I know it. You want to bet? The hundred you won in the contest? Sure. It's a pleasure doing business with you, Miss Lawrence. Let's go downstairs. I'll wait up here. That'll be a hundred dollars. I'd like it in big bills, please. Hey, wait a minute. That could be anybody at the door. You want to bet? Not a chance. Besides, we didn't shake on it. Bet's not legal if you don't shake. Now she tells me. Hello, TJ. I do? I mean, thank you. Willie looks as though he's lost his last friend. It's only temporary. Now, frankly, I'm not ready for this. I know what you mean. Scrabble. Why not? 